the British royal family. The only people who think chess is a representative game. Look, there's me, and there's you, and there's the people who pay us. <laughs> Yesterday marked Queen Elizabeth's 70th year on the throne, making her the longest serving monarch in British history, which must be nice for all of those people who've been shouting, long live the queen. Yeah, because now they can be like, yeah, you see, we did that. Now, as part of the anniversary observance, the family has announced that if and when Queen Elizabeth dies and her son Charles becomes king, his wife Camilla will be crowned alongside him as queen. And I don't know if you remember, but when Camilla first started dating Charles, people said that she could never be queen because their relationship started as an affair. So this is huge. This is a huge, huge deal. And I also think it's the right move, because can you imagine how awkward it was gonna be otherwise if every time Charles and Camilla walked in a room and the royal announcer would be like, presenting the King of England and presenting uh, his side piece? But while I'm sure the royals would love to be focusing on the future of the family, unfortunately, they've been forced to deal with a scandal from their past. You see, for decades, Elizabeth's second son, Prince Andrew, he was rolling deep with Jeffrey Epstein. And after years of fighting allegations that he had done anything wrong, it looks like he's finally throwing in the towel. Tonight, Prince Andrew dramatically averting a court battle, not admitting liability, but not clearing his name. Virginia Dufry claimed she was sexually assaulted by the prince when she was 17 years old, trafficked by Epstein. The 61-year-old prince will pay his accuser, Virginia Dufray, a reported $10 million and make a substantial donation to her charity in support of victims' rights. Of course, questions saying, is it Prince Andrew's money? We know that he's sold his Swiss ski chalet reputedly for about 18 million, but many people saying the queen is is helping to foot the bill. Yeah, that's right. After years of fighting, Prince Andrew has finally settled with Virginia Dufresne. And although it's not perfect justice, I mean, it is something. You know, to be honest, I almost feel like this guy got off easy because, yeah, it is $10 million, but you're from the royal family. Think about it. $10 million is like one jewel from one of their crowns. And this has got to suck for the queen. Like, imagine having to use the money that you earned to... I guess you didn't, like, earn it, but, I mean, imagine, like, working hard your whole life. Oh, well, I mean, she doesn't really work. Um, you, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. The point is, the queen didn't get into the royal business to do stuff like this, right? She got into it to steal spices from India. It's about that life. And I can tell you now, this is probably where she misses the days when she could just chop off people's heads, you know? Because back in the day, with this thing happening with Andrew, the queen would have just been like, Andrew! I dropped my contact lens. Would you bend down and pick it up? Where, mommy? <laughs> 10 million saved. Oh, and by the way, the next time your mom complains about you asking her for rent money, you just show her the story and remind her it could be way worse. But let's move on. If you're tired of the same old, same old dating app scene where you swipe right on the cute guy, he swindles you out of thousands of dollars, blah, 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 then good news. Tinder is now offering a blind date feature on the app. Yeah, because usually when you're scrolling through people, you first see their picture, right? And then you decide right away whether you're too good looking for them or they're too good looking for you. But now, Tinder is just gonna ask you questions. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna match you with someone based on your responses. And then you have a chat with them. And then if you both like each other, Tinder will show you their pictures, which is great. Because if they stop talking to you at that point, then you know immediately that you're ugly. And you know, it's so funny how tech companies came out like they're the future. They're gonna show us new things. But then as time goes on, they seem to invent stuff that already exists. Like blind dates. It's the future of dating. No, people in the Middle Ages were like, all our dates are blind. And I'm sorry, but you can't really recreate blind dates unless you also recreate the part where your mutual friend tries to talk the other person up whilst also avoiding their faults. That's a key part of blind dates. Yeah, he's like super good at cooking and he loves to read. Interesting, so does he have a job? As I said, he loves to read. Eh? I also have to mention that this blind dating scheme that Tinder's running, this is discriminatory towards hot, dumb, boring people. You realize you're taking away their greatest asset. 
People with good personalities, they're gonna do fine in this situation. They can meet people in person, they can charm them. All some people have is a six pack. They don't even know that they have a six pack because they can't count that high. All right, but let's move on to a story coming from my home country, South Africa. Yeah, it's not the most creatively named country, but you always know where to find us. It's been almost 10 years since the passing of South Africa's first democratically elected president, Nelson Mandela. And for those of you who don't know, Nelson Mandela was basically the Martin Luther King of our Harriet Tubmans. And everywhere you go in South Africa, there are reminders of how great he is. Like, there are statues, uh, there are bridges named after him. There's whole neighborhoods that bear his name. But now, there's a new, fancier way for people who want to celebrate his legacy. The former home of Nelson Mandela is now a luxury hotel. It's called Sanctuary Mandela, and it was Mandela's first home in Johannesburg after being released from 27 years in prison. South Africa's first black president lived there for six years. It now can host 18 guests, and 18 guests rather, and is adorned with Mandela memorabilia. Even Madiba's former cook is on staff there, helping to prepare meals. Rooms range from $250 to as much as $1,000 a night. Yeah, that's right. Nelson Mandela's old house has been turned into a luxury hotel. And I mean, I guess this is just the fate of every historic building now, right? Because if you think about it, half of the old buildings around the world are now either a bank, an Apple store, or a CVS. That's it. I wouldn't be shocked if in like 100 years, the White House is gonna be turned into Jeff Bezos's dog's weekend place. Now, some people think that it doesn't make sense for the home of the man who fought inequality to be turned into a luxury hotel, but it does. It actually does. And it really does if you remember one of Mandela's most famous quotes when he said, do not judge me by the color of my skin, but rather judge me by the thread count of these Egyptian cotton sheets falling out of control. Eh, eh, eh. It was a powerful speech. We cried that day. <laughs> We cried that day. Also, you know, when you're staying at the Nelson Mandela Hotel, good luck fighting the minibar charges that you think are unfair. You're just gonna be at the front desk like, hi, excuse me, I think I was unfairly charged for a bag of pistachios. Madam, let me tell you about unfair charges. So yeah, look, this is gonna come with its pros and its cons. People are gonna be for it and against it. And I guess it will be good for the people who work there and maybe some of the community, but you gotta admit, man, at the same time, it does feel a little disrespectful for everything that Nelson Mandela went through, you know? He's gonna pay some money and you can sleep in his house? You know what he had to do to get to that house? You know what they should do? They should, they should say for every night that you stay in the hotel, you should also have to spend a night in an apartheid prison. Yeah, now you're getting the full experience. You know, I actually hope that they do this with African dictator homes, too? Because, like, yeah, Mandela had a nice house, but forget him, man. African dictators, those dudes lived lavish. They should make that an experience. Can you imagine soaking in Idi Amin's jacuzzi, chilling on his giant couch? Woo! Dressing up in the skin of his enemies? Talk about a honeymoon. You like this, baby? All right, finally, let's move on to some news from the world of religion. Since we were young, many of us have been taught the same story, all right? Be good. Pray every day, and you'll get into heaven. What your grandmother probably didn't mention is that a paperwork issue could send you to hell. A Catholic priest in Arizona has resigned because of a mistake the church says he's been making for more than 20 years. During thousands of baptisms, he used the phrase, we baptize, instead of I baptize. And the Vatican says that one word change makes all the baptisms he performed invalid. The priest has apologized and again, resigned. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, what? All the baptisms are invalid because of one word? No, one word? This is like the worst thing a Catholic priest has ever done. But for real, people, I cannot believe that the Vatican is gonna say all of these baptisms, all of them, like what, 2,000 are invalid just because the priest said we instead of I. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm glad to hear that the Catholic Church cares about people's pronouns, but this seems like a minor mistake to me. You know, like, I would understand if the priest accidentally cleansed their souls in white claw, that I would get, but this doesn't seem like a huge deal. And what's gonna happen to all the people who weren't actually baptized? What happens to them now, huh? Are they gonna go to hell for someone else's mistake? That's so unfair. Everyone else who gets to go to hell 
goes there because they got to have some fun first, you know? Now they're all gonna be down in the fire pits like, well, I'm being burned forever, but it was worth it for the orgies! Ha <laughs> ha! What are you in for, man? My priest made a typo. Oh, sure, whatever. <laughs> you probably killed some puppies or something, you sick f Yo, let's torture this guy extra hard! So, no, wait, sorry, sorry, hold on. I'm hearing from my producers that, well, that, that can't be right. We have an interview with God himself? Is that even possible? How? Uh, all right, can we, can we patch him in? Yeah, yeah, turn on the webcam. Oh, my Lord! Hey! Hey, Trevor, it's me, God. God indeed, baby, how you been? Well, this is amazing. God, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Hey, baby, I'm happy to be here. Look, we gotta make this quick, though. I'm working on creating a new animal. It's like a horse, but it's got flippers and it's got fangs. I gave it one wing. Ooh, boy, it's gonna mess you all up. Oh, God, I have so many questions. First, first of all, I, I didn't know that this is how you look. Oh, no, th this, this is just how I look to you. I don't look like this when I'm talking to white folks. I wanna surprise them when they get here. <laughs> Oh, man, God, I, I just... Oh, oh, I also have another question, and this is a little embarrassing, No, but... I'm not helping you with Wordle. How did you know that that was what I was gonna ask? Todd, Todd, are you asking about Wordle? You tweet about Wordle all the time. You need to get a life, man. Yeah, but the New York Times made the words... Anyway, God, let's talk about the issue at hand. What's your position on this priest in Arizona who's been messing up baptisms? I'm gonna be honest, I, I got no idea what you're talking about. Uh, there's a priest in Arizona who said the wrong word, and now uh -huh. the Vatican is all upset, and they're saying that the people might be going to hell now. You, you haven't heard about this? No, man. I don't pay half as much attention to Earth as y'all think I do. I'm having too much fun. Look at me, I'm in heaven. We got Prince, Whitney Houston, George Michael. Every day up here is a Super Bowl halftime show. Wait, hold, so hold, you're saying worried that you're not really Earth. focused on every single thing that's going on down here? No, I ain't worried about everything going on. Do, do you realize how many worlds I've created? I can't keep track of every single one. You think Shonda Rhimes know what's going on in every single one of her TV shows. She got the firefighter show, she got the doctor show, she got the one where everybody having sex in the 1700s. It's impossible to keep track of, okay. impossible. I mean, that makes sense, but are you saying that even if this priest messed up the baptisms, you, you would still accept these people into heaven? That's right. People don't sweat the small stuff. Look, this is all you got to do, Trevor. All you got to do to get into heaven is be a good person. I just want people up here who aren't gonna ruin the party, all right? Now, if you'll excuse me, it's trivia night, and Alex Trebek is on my team. Trebek, baby, let's get these bitcoins. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Man, heaven sounds like a lot of fun. I can't wait to see it one day. This is... Oh, don't worry. You're gonna see it real soon. Wait, what? What, what is... How, how soon?